Welcome to Forever Excel, the Path of Excel podcast. I'm Justin, aka Tags. Oh, wow. I was going to say you, you started too fast, but then it's like you slow mode it. That's right. Uh, if you know what I mean. Should we add that to the end? I'm Wrecker of Days, by the way, Tyler. You can call me You can call me T-Bone, though. Well, everybody does. Um, we should we should do the whole innuendo thing. There was a really old, like, 90s comedy when you were in high school that came out, and it was like, if you know what I mean, at the end of everything. And it was supposed to be all sexual, but then it was literal. What was that? I don't, I don't remember. I was forget. That, like, it was horrible. It was one of the many million horrible comedies that came out directed towards us, geared towards us, but it was like, we should go pull some rug, if you know what I mean. And then the next stage, like they're actually doing rug stuff. It has nothing to do with anything. I don't remember that at all. Just pulling a rug. It was horrible. It sucks. I mean, anyway, so let's do it. It sounds very if it 90s. Sucks for them. It was, if you know what I mean. Big shout out to our patrons, two new patrons this week, Henriksen and Atlante. Thank you guys, girls, both for joining up. That's awesome. If you're curious what our Patreon is, you can find out more information down below. It gives you access to our podcast after the podcast, which is just more of us talking about stuff and things, doing stuff and things, mostly just staring at each other. If if you like us, you'll like After Dark. Sort if of. If you don't yeah. like us, you won't you'll like After Dark. You'll love After Dark. <laughs> Either way, check it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Anyway, thank oh, you guys yeah. so much for supporting the podcast. You're all awesome. Wanted to give a, a quick thank you to everybody. I, um had a little event last episode, a little, uh, I don't know, just need to get something off my chest. And I did, and I appreciate it. But there was a lot of people that reached out um, within our community, both friends in real life, and then people within our the community that we have now with Forever XL. And just a lot of people reached out and said that they were sorry for what I was going through, or that they're going to, through something similar. And so just want to thank everyone for uh, actually taking the time to to be thoughtful and kind. And uh, What was this? What, what, I don't oh, Yeah, thanks for listening. No, you're great. I know. No, that's awesome. <laughs> now, team Justin, team Justin. So moving on, Just, how was your week? Well, I just remember a couple friends messaging me this week saying like, man, Tyler, what a bitch, hey? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just talking about. Oh, I know. Yes. COVID funness. Yeah. Well, no, it, it's honestly, it was irrelevant of COVID. It just came up because of COVID. Difference of points just... of view causing it, Yeah, people friendship. not loving others just because they're opinions are different on something right. and so anyway people were very kind to reach out to me and people were very kind to um well i guess it was nice that people were open about themselves as well and so anyway i just want to thank everybody and i thought that they did well i was also waving my i'm talking lots with my hands that's how emotional i am right now and you can't see it so the only re the only thing i remember about you being emotional is when you get emotional you get uh you get much more I'm trying to remember the Manly. word that uh Manly. camille and i came up with you for you but you'd like Dramatic. to take your you like to take your voice from lows to highs and it comes and goes and mostly just makes me you know, want to slap you a little bit. But in real life, it doesn't matter if you're my editor. Yes. Yes, it matters. <laughs> then you hate Tyler. <laughs> How was your week, bud? Uh, I had I had a crazy week, actually. So out of nowhere, I was thinking I, I knew Ian had a free evening and I don't remember how or why, but I'm like, what am I doing? I don't have anything to do today. My wife's home. We're, we planned a super easy dinner for the evening. I'm like, I can go see if Ian wants to go out for a bite to eat. I haven't been with the guy forever. So we went out and we were like, <laughs> we were like two kids just like beginning the dating stages, excited to go on a date. It was like, that's, that's a not sure idea. what to do. Where should, <laughs> where should we go? What should we eat? Do you do, where did we like, what do you, and it was just back and forth for like, you know how sometimes when you're going on Netflix and it's, instead of watching Netflix, you scroll Netflix for an hour. Yep. It was kind of like that with us. We were just trying to figure it out, but we were so excited to actually go out to a restaurant and, uh, and hang out for a bit. And so, but that was a lot of fun. I, I got to do that first restaurant I've been to since this whole thing began, as far as did I know, you have which to show means your ID. We did. I got to use my, uh, out here people, we have a, a, a vax pass, a vaccination pass. And so it's like a QR code that you can have on your phone. It comes through the uh, provincial health system and you can just flash it. Restaurants or other places that require vaccination pass will scan it and you're either in or then they kick the crap out of you and kick you out. So, but yeah, it was, it was neat. Uh, the only time I've ever used it, but it, it worked, which was nice. It worked. <laughs> it's, well, you know, you're nervous, right? Like it's the first time this stuff happens. People always grumble about the government, no matter what government you have, but it was cool. It worked and everybody else in the restaurant was really respectful and scared of everyone, but still smiling. And yeah, it was pretty cool. But I sent you a link. Do you, do you, now this is, this is moving on and I had an awesome time with Ian. We, we seriously, we were there for like four hours, I think, just talking and talking and talking. It was crazy. 
But the rest of my week was like, remember how I dethashed my law and I was talking to you about that last time around. And so I went through all the prep. Well, it's been over the week now and I'm barely seeing my grass grow. And I hate it when it, for whatever the reasons are with the environment and the weather, that it's, it's taking a long time to germinate instead of the short time, because I want, I don't, I get nervous that I'm like, oh no, I killed them. I, I drowned them or it's been too sunny or I let them drought out too long. And so then I like, I want to reseed before, you know, the three week germination periods in there. And so anyway, so I was checking out some stuff and I'm on Scott's because of course we're not sponsored by Scott's, but we should be. And so I was checking out the Scott's lawn stuff. I'm going to bleep out the name that you just said until they're sponsoring us. You were checking out bleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Until they do. Yeah, you don't and get free so, advertising, Scots. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so anyway, Justin, if you see me like just like grabbing at the I air, do. I have a I have a fruit it's like fly. Like a fruit fly, and yeah, it, annoying it, oh, it's as heck. Me nuts, and it's only flying in front of the white parts of my screen. It's not taking its time in front of the black parts. Anyway, so I'm checking out Scots, and I'm just making sure I'm doing things right, and I'm you know just being impatient, and that's the only reason my lawn's not looking nice. And I come across this personalized lawn care delivered to your door. I sent you this link. Do you remember it? It was like, you know, they'll send you, you can sign up for like a subscription thing and you send them the square dimensions of your, of your lawn or lawns. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well, this is the area you live in. This is the amount of lawn you have. And then it's like a subscription service and they just send you what you need at the proper time of year. And you just go for it. And I was like, oh, something less to think about. So I went to go check out the price and see what it was like. Almost all the time, I'm like, oh, a dollar? That's way too expensive. But, oh, that stupid fruit fly, I'm going to kill you. And so, anyway, I checked it out. Of course, America only. They don't do that kind of nice stuff in Canada. So I was all bitter towards Americans, even though it's not their fault. You should, you should give my guy a call just out of curiosity, because I love taking care of my own lawn. But I also love the fact that he comes in does the fertilizing when I need it. He'll call, text me if I want to have it aerated and I, I still mow it and I'll take care of it otherwise, but. Oh, don't forget vacuum. You vacuum your lawn. Yeah. Yeah. It, but if, I mean, if you look at my lawn right now, which my lawn has been rough this summer, I just let it just go. Oh my God. The color of the green that is coming in right now is beautiful. It looks yeah, so nice. freaking good up front. I used your guy last year. He aerated my lawn because it hadn't been aerated since we moved in a couple of years ago. I guess oh, okay. three years ago now. So anyway, yep. it was your guy that came, but yeah. And so anyway, I'm going through and I'm trying to do things manually and I'm still trying to be patient, but there's not much I can do now because I seeded and stuff like that. So there's only certain places in my garden that I can hang out. And, uh, and there's been a compost in our yard since we moved in. So it's been about three years now and it's overgrown by weeds that we share with our neighbors, right? It's right next to the fence we share with our neighbors, but those weeds are holding up that part of the fence. So I can't really <laughs> can't take them out. <laughs> no, it's like a big, like weedy bush and I just can't take that out. And also, um, I'm a little nervous to move a compost that hasn't been touched in a few years in case, you know, like if I knock it over or open up the lid and try to start digging stuff out, what, what might be in there? Like but a anyway. body or like, what are you worried about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was thinking there's some, there's some weird patches in my backyard. I do think that just a couple feet under is somebody's ex-spouse and there's then they just human. decided to move out. Yeah. I'm going to blame the uh, house inspector on that one if they didn't catch that. But no, anyway, so there's, there's a compost there, like a tall three foot one that people would use to make their own soil. All of a sudden we discover that there's like a billion wasps in there. Yeah. Gross. But you know how I discovered it? Dethatching. And so now it's all of a sudden I'm like, and I'm the kind of guy where I'm like, just ignore them and they'll never bother you. Right. My wife's the kind of person where she Kill sees one wasp with and fire. dinner's done. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's got like a flame door <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't matter what you were talking about. It like, she could be in the process of signing a contract for a free million dollars, but if there's a wasp around deals done, forget it, cancel everything. This thing needs to die first. Part of the reason we sold our apartment was a mouse. My wife was like, that's it. I'm done. I want to sell the house. <laughs> That's different. That's different. It's true though. It's ridiculous. That was your apartment. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. And now you have the most problem at your house, right? No. Oh my God. No. <laughs> if that <laughs> happened, it would be, she'd be like, all right, on to the next one. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Forget getting rid of them. But no. So anyway, I'm like the kind of guy, like, I'm just going to do my work. I'll get out of there. But the Thatcher is pretty, like it was, it was hard for me to move around personally. And then of course I'm going back in there with a rake. So it's a lot of movement. 
So I get stung and whatever. You like, did? We, yeah, but you and oh, I, wow. we played sports for forever. Like we break bones. We'd like all this. And when we were younger, it was never a big deal. So, you know, there's sometimes we feel old. Sometimes you forget you're old. Well, I'm going around. I get stung in the elbow. And so I go quickly and I show my kids. I'm like, look how it's swelling. And I'm trying to show them like you don't have to slowly well, dying. No, but you like... don't have to freak out because you got stung. by Some people like, are you know, allergic, to... so they have to. Well, guess who is? Maybe. Oh, are you? My arm was like three <laughs> times the size of my other arm. My wife was so worried. She's like pumping Benadryl down me like crazy for the next few days. I couldn't even bend Doesn't my she arm have life insurance for on the you? first two days. Yeah, but it's a lot less than I have on her. Right? Okay, I was she still say, has like, a job. <laughs> so <laughs> cover the <she's>, mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. The pillow. Go to sleep, hon. It's Go fine. To sleep. It's fine. She'll just suffocate me. But no, my arm was massive. Wow. One wasp. I mean, sure, there was a hundred, but one wasp kicked the crap out of me. It was so embarrassing. So anyway. So now I'm not allowed to do anything over there because my wife's scared that I'm going to get stung around the neck and then I'm going to suffocate. So now she has has that job, but but during my time off, we'll say, I watched what you watched. I watched the Schumacher documentary on Netflix. It was good, eh? Oh my goodness, wasn't it? Like, I've been a Formula One fan for forever. I have some of those races still on my VHS. But to even, like, get to the point where you see Schumacher and Ayrton Senna, like, that, that was tough stuff. And then, of course, leading into the modern day stuff. And my wife started watching when Schumacher was on Mercedes. So after he came back out of retirement, and then of course, like literally once a week, she's looking for updates on his health situation. The very secretive the in the Netflix. Very. Uh, yep. But I was so impressed with how respectful Netflix was. I mean, who knows what it was like in the background, but how respectful Netflix was to all that privacy. Because I don't think this ever would have been made if there was any pushing. You know what I mean? Like they're, no, yeah, they, sure. they are so well off. Mm -hmm. They don't need like, it. Did you see the stuff they do for fun? Yeah. I love the idea. I mean, it's really unfortunate what happened to him, but it, 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 what made me kind of laugh a bit was the idea of like, snow's not great. Should we go uh, parachuting in Dubai? Like, <laughs> that's right. your option. What? That's, that's what they're going to do <laughs> instead of. Yeah. Be just not because it's not because the weather's bad, but because the snow wasn't, the snow wasn't great in like, France. So, but like back in the day now, think about inflation. Back in the day, he would sell. On his helmet, because your helmet was where you could personally advertise and your own sponsors that weren't married to your team were oh, allowed really? to advertise on your helmet. He would have like a one inch by two inch rectangle that he would sell for over $250,000. Hmm. Like we're talking 90s, right? Like this is the 90s and the early 2000s. That's so much money. And that's per race. Like That's crazy. So He's anyway, going yeah, for was, stem cell treatment. I was reading after I saw the documentary, I was like, I wonder what, what is going on. So anyway, it was really cool. So now we can chit chat about it in after dark. And, uh, last thing about my week, sorry, it was so long. Didn't mean to, but apparently I'm an ultimate sissy. I got all emotional just for going out for lunch. I got stung by a bee and I'm telling a story about it, but I read an article this week, uh, 15 games you like to play or you, you should play, or you would probably like, if you like path of exile. So I click on it. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. Don't really get a lot of these. And uh, they're, they're all garbage. There's like you would two say that, anyway, that are kind of, well, I guess PoE is just so unique within its own genre, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, uh, nope, that's nothing like it. Nope, that's nothing like it. I mean, they were so desperate to try and come up with things that were even close to PoE land. They had Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. They had Torchlight 1 and Torchlight 2. Like just they were really RPG. They're basically, yeah. And I mean, at least within the article, they were kind of on really honest about like, it doesn't come close to POE in this regard, but it was kind of, I like those articles, even if the article's really stretching for something, because it just kind of reiterates to me, because I can get really caught up in the moment and then the complaints of the community and then the things that I wish were happening, because GG's always willing to listen. That it's kind of, it's so easy to start taking things for granted. And so I, uh, that kind of like resets the clock a bit for me. You know what I mean? Make me take a step back. I'm like, man, there's so much to appreciate in this game. If I got so pissed that I stopped for a league, I wouldn't play anything that's similar to this. There's nothing that can replace it. So it was cool. A little eureka moment for me. How about you? How was your week? It was you good. You didn't have one. I, it was ridiculously busy. I, I'm ready to throw my phone out. And I, I was laughing to myself today going, yeah, I think I need a vacation where I can actually not bring my phone, but 
It's not going to happen. But I did. Go ahead. I was just going to ask. I think I'm going to go back into all of our episodes and I'm going to go straight to this. How was your week, Just? Mine's the same every week. (laughs) I want to to write down how many episodes you're like, it was a good week. It was pretty relaxing. I'm going to go back. I don't think that happens often where it was pretty good. It was pretty relaxing. It's like, you're so busy. It's very busy. busy. But I'm also relatively general when we talk about our week. If my week is busy, work is insane. But (laughs) But what did you do? I did play a Vidya game through the I've week. Yep. Okay. So I started playing Detroit Become Human. It was originally released only on the PS5, which is why I didn't play it. It was a PlayStation exclusive. And I think when it first came out, it was oh, a PlayStation detective exclusive. detective game. Came out on PC. It was, I think it was on sale or something. I remember it popped up in front of me. And I had already always been kind of curious about it. It is one of my favorite games I think I've ever played. No. I finished it. I was so hooked that I had to finish it. I Like, I finished it this week. I played through the whole thing this week. I've never played a game before that has as many choices and endings and things that can change. Like, every time you finish a scene, you get this, like, flow chart of your choices and what happened. But there are all these other locked options that you never saw because you made different choices through the thing and you never get to find out what they are. Like you literally would have to play it again. They just stay locked. You never see anything. And I think it was probably the hardest game for me to ever play in my life where I was like, I'm not going to Google. I'm going to just, here's my choice. I don't know what's going to happen, but this is what I'm doing and this is the direction I'm going. And Oh my gosh, man. The storytelling in that game is crazy good. So I played that. That was like when I had free time, I played that game and it was awesome. I, yeah, I, there, it, it's crazy. It's really hard to not go back now and be like, well, maybe I could play a different way. Can you play differently in those games? I find when I'm doing like, I guess my, my reference point would be something like Telltale games, right? The, the almost two-dimensional half-puzzle, half-dialogue games. I actually quite liked a lot of the ones that I played, but every time I went to go play differently, I couldn't. Whether it was like the moral choice that I was making, like in that circumstance, I would always make that choice. Obviously, that's very generic. There's so many good storytellings and options that you can have, but we threw out all the games that there are. But And then there was just things that I knew I loved doing. And it was so hard for me to go back into some of these games and actually play different. Even if I wanted a different outcome, I really just always made the same thing. Can can you do that? So I could in this game. One of the things with this game is if I'm going into an area to investigate something or I've got to look around for, you know, something before an event happens, the game doesn't actually let you exhaust all of your options before the story continues. So... If I'm going into an area and I'm looking at something and I look at the picture, for example, that was on the table, I pull up this picture and then I go and check out this gun. Turns out that gun is what actually is going to trigger the next part. I didn't know that. And now I've missed out on things that now are not unlocked as the story continues and completely changes the story. Not only that, I played through trying to put myself in the mindset of like an android that you know, there's rules, you can't do this, can't do that. If I played through again, I'd be like, now that I know the story and how things go, I'm, I'm going to shoot you. If I want to shoot you, I'm going to shoot you. I tried not to in this one. So I'm really curious how the story would change. But man, the storytelling in that game, crazy, crazy good. It was one of the funnest games I've ever played with that type of... It's a little hard though when you play, there's two difficulties, story and I don't know what they call it, advanced or something. But it's a lot of like combo of keys, hold shift, left click and press up, which is terrifying when you're doing a fight scene and you sometimes die. Your character's just dead because you sucked. And then what happens? The story continues. You're just that person is they're dead or maybe somebody connected to them is now also, dead. Also there's multiple characters you're playing with. Yep. And, okay. Yeah, you're playing through this story of these and it's a I don't know, it's just really really cool. Interesting. Anyway, that my, my week was mostly just that. It was a lot of work. And then when I had time, I was playing that for some fun. And I feel like there was something else, but I don't remember. Yeah, it was good though. Let's go to this week in PoE. 
It's a uh, it's exciting. <laughs> we're we're it gets a little boring as we get uh this no, oh, we're it close. Oh shush, yeah, it does. Gosh. Well this stuff, this week in PoE, it's boring. This stuff is it becomes boring. Well, sure, but it always is. But we like it because we're nerds about path. Some of it. We're like a week or two away from the announcements to start. Like PoE tweeted the <laughs> the like announcements announcements of the announcements and announcements of the announcements of the announcements today which it, that, that gets exciting because then you get some teasers and you get excited for it so yeah for sure yeah so, why is console week, on here consoles the console's the best just it's always at the how top. have they not canceled that yet that's got to be coming with the next step with the next i week. hope not though God, that'd be i don't know if you want to talk about it today or not but i did for science play the i have an xbox series x i played the xbox one version I feel hour. like within a sentence we can just agree that it was garbage. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but console, whether you're on the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, it's the same game technically per se, same world and universe. And so the 3B patch came out, no biggie, right? Awesome. Now everybody can turn off the uh, the, the podcast because that's all they want to know and that's what they listen to us for. Uh, they they came out. I I don't know. There was a lot of fun stuff. Not all of it was uh, for me, but they'd had the the you you have not really ties like you don't know them but crip was a part kind of part of how you got into poe wasn't he no he just happened to be he he started playing it while i was playing it he came from the diablo 3 release so i was already playing um poe at that time but he was kind of the big streamer that came into poe i, I think he was one of the first ones i ever saw do like developer interviews with ggg Interesting. So they had um, a streamer interview with Kriparian, which was uh, interesting. Oh, the to written read one? Through. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like those ones a lot. And so they did one last week. They did another one this week. And I hope they keep them going. Even if they're people I'm not familiar with or know, it's nice to nice to read some stuff about it. So and it was neat. And just the hideout competition stuff, they came out with the winners of it. I'm looking through this video. It's like eight minutes. And every single one, I'm like, oh my goodness, these hideouts are amazing. They're just it boggles my mind that someone can think of it, let alone make it with the system that they have. It's so crazy. Like, I can't, it makes me so nauseous fiddling with these little details and things and angles and, oh, like, oh, it can't go there. Oh, it's too close. Like, you know, the AOE and the collision detection of all these things. And, oh, man. And for them to do this, oh, it blows my mind, boggles me. There were so many cool ones. I just even those that weren't in the video just big kudos to people that can actually do more than reposition your npcs mm -hmm. yeah anything stand out to you no not for this week in poe but uh are we done this week in poe can i talk about our private league yeah sweet so our private league started today if you're playing it have fun die lots if you're not in it you can still find more information on our discord we've always got slots available so you can pop in there's prizes to win, fun to be had. There have been a lot of deaths already. Shut up. Shut up. Hey, I didn't say anything, but you own like a page. <laughs> <laughs> it's a page that isn't editable, unfortunately. There, there are a whole bunch of characters I can't change the level on. I don't know why. It must be a glitch in the system. Um, a quick shout out to Talon and Love Contagion, who developed this amazing bot that we've been using now in our Discord that you can use commands on in the uh, FE Private League channel. And it checks uh, the ladder and checks where Tyler and I are currently ranked because Tyler is a very low goal to set for to get into the, what, lottery? The lottery draw? Currently, I feel like if you get to level six, you're... <laughs> <laughs> I, I finally made it past breaking the eggs, just. I finally made it past. I think I, did I see you fighting Brutus? Yeah, crushed him. Are you alive right now on a current yeah. character? Oh, oh wow. yeah. Beat Brutus, and I'm like, okay, I'm done, I'm out. <laughs> Took me like eight hours to get to Brutus. <laughs> no, those stupid Roa. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like, I'm getting frozen all the time. And oh, Act man, one, it was nerve wracking. Oh. Not cool. And then no. you throw an expedition in it. It's terrifying. But you have with hardcore and uh, granted they don't do this stuff with hardcore but and uh, sorry let me let me go back that that bot fallon and love contagion amazing awesome super cool and thank you so yeah, thank much you for guys. doing it I, it's, it's well, really one thing exciting. i was going to say is i asked fallon i was like it'd be really fun to have a command that showed us how many times tyler's died but the problem is you go to standard afterwards 
But then I realized that also on the list of it, it still shows all your dead characters. So I'm hoping he'll take a look at that and see, because I really would love to see. The only thing is, I said to him too, most leagues, you're not dead this often. <laughs> This is been no, a tough no. League. But one thing that I noticed, though, like they increased the difficulty, but they removed the mana, and I found a big part of why I was dying was my inability to get mana. I the flasks weren't dropping, and so, um, and it honestly didn't cross my mind to go buy a flask from um whatever her name is Nessa, but I was running up. Uh, my mana flasks were not filling up. They weren't, and I'm like desperately casting fireball. Uh, what did I? Do? I tried duelist. I tried Marauder, like I wanted to do a max block gladiator for a while. And I'm like, okay, well, I suck at melee in this game. I can't specifically click on I stuff. I love so you I'm trying... a crab. <laughs> oh my goodness, the crab, they're so freaking small. And or like not the crab, but like the second funny thing that comes out of it. it. Trying to hit it. Well, yeah, and I mean, because of how bad I aim in the game, like I'm trying things like ground slam, I'm trying perforate, I'm trying the shield crush, I'm trying the bigger AoEs that are available early on. But I'm like running in circles, trying to group them together so that when I turn around and hit them, I'm hitting as many as I can. And it, like it worked for a while. I was pretty successful with the duelist died breaking the eggs or close to it just after whatever it was. And I just couldn't. <laughs> and so then I'm like, OK, you know what? I won't do the max block gladiator. I'll try the marauder. And then very quickly, I'm like, oh, man, there's like even less. I'm like, I had to use ground slam for the, like the skills that I could use. And I'm like, all right, let's try, let's try the witch. I'm going with my zombie guide. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, the zombies are so pointless. And I couldn't get SRS until I broke the eggs, but I couldn't beat the Roa. And I'm just this weak little skeleton. One, one minion goes, boop, boop, and I'm dead. And I couldn't believe how fast I died sometimes. It was rough, man. It was rough. It was fun to watch. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was. Yeah. So no, I think I have like nine deaths before even making the underground passage. Uh, but then I, once I got SRS, I'm, I've been fine. So I finally, finally, after so many different attempts, got a witch of all people past breaking the eggs, got SRS. And now that I've killed Brutus, uh, I got skeletons instead. So that's way more mana friendly. So that'll be a lot more helpful going into the uh, Mervay fight if, if, if I get there. I love that. At one point you said to your kid, oh, I, I'm not going to make it that long. <laughs> you yeah. were talking about something i don't remember what I, but i i think well yeah oliver was kind of bored today the kids had a pro d day for, from school so they were home today and so um he was sitting on my lap watching me play and he's like this character's not very good and i'm like well because he doesn't know you have to level up <laughs> yeah. and get better so i was explaining it to him a bit and um so he's like so i was telling him like act one they, the the company that makes the game they're, they're they made this first act really hard and they're going to start making the other acts harder so he's like well then you need to get act two pretty quick and I'm like, oh, oh no, I'm not going to get there. No, that, that's <laughs> your dad's not good enough to do that without dying. So I was explaining to him that we were doing a mode where if you died once, your your game was done. And he said, that doesn't sound very fun. I don't like hardcore. Good call. So I agreed. I think everyone that likes hardcore is an absolute idiot. And I will never be friends with you. As we were playing, so I'm, I think I'm rank 11th as, as we started this. So I definitely won't be by the time we finish. But I am not at all even a tiny bit on board with them making acts two through ten harder <laughs> because of how act one is for you it's it, well it's just maybe it's different when we play soft quirks then i don't care so much then it's like oh my god this is stupid but it's so much longer i mean act one took me longer anyway this time because i was busy with work but it's also slower because i don't want to die like more than anything i don't want to be the yellow text of dying i don't want to so I, I it was slow it, yeah. and I don't want it to be harder. It, it, at this point, it doesn't seem like I like hard. I have no problem with hard. I have no problem with failing, but I like knowing what I could do to get better. And a lot of the times in this game, when I die, even if it's early on, I don't know what I could have done. Like in these other circumstances, yes, I died lots and yes, I eventually passed it, but I didn't do anything different. I didn't restructure my characters differently. I didn't like, oh, I needed to save my mana for this circumstance because I always need mana. It's not like, you know. So I think one thing, if they wanted to make the game harder, one thing you really want to pay attention to is kind of like the other requirements a character needs, not hopes to get, but things like restructure how life flasks drop or their availability within like guaranteed certain life flasks at certain levels with your vendor. Same with mana flasks, that kind of stuff, or make sure that they're there. 
all the time like dropping as often as scrolls of wisdom well actually more would be nice considering how few you get at the beginning of the game but like when the game's difficult you want it to be the strategy of your character that fails or your inability or you put yourself in a stupid situation not the game has dropped actually nothing for you and you're at brutus still with small life flasks and small mana flasks well i was actually heading to merve i was in the last zone to go fight her and i still had the small life flasks no life flasks had dropped in all of act one so i went back and bought i think it's a great life i don't know it's the third rank one uh three but it's three wisdom scrolls each that's actually that's a that lot kind of sucks early on, on. i was start, like oh my that's god yeah so but i had no choice because a small life flask is not going to cut it no at that stage especially her. if you've invested in life it refills so slowly if you have four or five five percent life flask by the time you get there it's it's a slow refill yeah so but i enjoyed the difficulty of it it was it was fun failing and uh it was fun finally succeed. it felt dark soulsy like obviously the gameplay is totally different but the the satisfaction of fine like getting frustrated wanting to quit nah i shouldn't quit that's that's pathetic push through die again die again die again then you get it in like it was it was nice so now if i die now it's like oh, okay now nah, i'm not gonna do act one again forget it <laughs> i got it i i got a really good feeling once i got through act one because i was like okay oh now you it's did to yeah i'm almost on act four at the current like currently but it was it was yeah it was a matter of like okay you just got to get through act one because act one is insane but yeah it's been good so far it's I, i've been playing with uh totems and i decided to go with the forbidden right not sure i'm liking it right now so i may switch i'm not sure why what's wrong with it i don't know everybody what's your problem yeah that's what everybody said and i was like mm, is it or am i just bad like i i'm finding it meh right now oh. maybe i again i'm only end of act four it's not like i'm super invested into it but it's it's just fine would you start as templar oh huh. and you're going hero yep eventually i'm terrified to go because i don't feel like my <laughs> damage is good enough like everybody talked about how it was this amazing boss killer and it probably is i didn't do enough research into it which maybe i should have i just took people saying how it's amazing i was like all right I can 10 do day it, event but... buddy just take your clothes off and go streak and have a good time that's pretty much what i'm doing i've already realized at this point that i need like 20 regrets because i wanted to change my tree which i should have planned it out ahead of time but i didn't but it, it, I, it's just meh I, it's like fine it's doing all right i can kill bosses they're slow you know like i killed dominus and i did a lot of circles and i can i have two two totems right now and the damage is fine but it's just reasonable <laughs> okay. i don't know it's that's yeah, fine yeah. it's not it, it's just, I, I was expecting to be like god be like yeah totem totem i win it's not like that yet so no well, it's because you're we'll not using there. cast and damage taken level one with lightning work okay so you want to know another funny thing this is just how poorly i planned going into this private league i did not realize that the templar does not get forbidden right at any point as a quest reward and I got in towards the end of Act Two, and I was like, "What the frick? When do I? When? When does for like no, no, nobody's offering it for sale? Like, do I just not get it? Not, it's not on the wiki. Thank you, wiki. There's no forbidden right page. No, on that's the how POE far wiki. behind though they are. Like, it's and it's not their fault. I guess it is their false. fault. I don't know. I'm blame, whatever. It's whatever. their yeah, wiki, yeah, so I don't know how it works. But anyway, I found it on some other website. And it said, once I eventually found it, that it wasn't, it was like for Witch, Shadow, and Scion, I think maybe. So this is the first time ever that I completely changed my Act 3 to go straight to the library. Like as soon as I got the chance, normally I don't go that way first. I finish off the whole like piety side of things before heading up towards the library. I went straight to the library so that I could buy the Forbidden Rite. And then I wasn't very impressed and I was like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> So, and it's a little hard when you're not totally sure of the build and you're playing hardcore because I don't want to die, but I also don't want to, I was bored of playing stuff I've done before. So we'll see. It's fun though. I love watching people die. Love yeah. I, I, I'm excited to see you die at some point too. Hopefully not I'll slow. Happen. It'll be like tortoise in the hair. I'll pass you. I'll get there. I think I can quit now and I'll, I'll stay ahead of you. I think you could too. <laughs> yes. Quite easily. 
in in terms of the wiki, I I feel so bad for them because obviously the people that work on the wiki are like they're diehards for the game and they do their very best to update it. They need as much help as they can get, but the game that they cover has changed so much extremely big stuff over the last two, maybe even three leagues, but definitely the last two leagues that they are that far behind, two leagues behind, where there's just literally pages of things that exist in the game that don't even have a page on the wiki. Can you not go and just add to the wiki though? I don't know how to add a page. I know how to change a description, but then it still needs to get approved, right? So whatever the task list is, approvals are on top of that. And so there's people that are changing it. But then for some reason, and I don't know the if, ands, or buts, so it's not a criticism, but for some reason, there's a group of people that have combined all of their different, their own POE databases that they have, all the other websites that we check, and they're not updating it on fandom. They're creating their completely own brand new wiki. That's kind of what they were talking about. I think it was, I forget if it was the second or the third interview with Chris, they were talking about like GGG actually being a part of their own wiki but i actually hate and it's no offense to the people that work on the official current official wiki even though it's behind but i hate the fandom site it's like advertisements everywhere constantly manipulating and moving my page around and i have to i'm constantly fighting the page just to find a very quick piece of information i absolutely hate the website so i realize another thing that bothers me about the game itself though that i don't really pay attention to in a normal leveling experience because i tend to play something that i'm comfortable with and it's relatively quick and i i can get through it quite quickly but modifiers on mobs i i don't know the solution but i get really irritated so i'm i'm fighting this one group it the the modifier for it is otherworldly i i don't actually know what that means i was trying to figure out like what are they doing why like they were quite difficult to kill I couldn't figure it out and there was there's nothing uh, I would rather them not come up with a fun fancy name and just be like takes less chaos damage <laughs> yeah, or whatever <laughs> or the description right? Like, is right multiplies on death right or not fractured or whatever it is game resource that you can type in otherworldly and it gives it the description to you sure if you want to keep with your fancy words then give me a wiki in game or something because it was really it was kind of annoying and I don't typically notice that stuff but it, it it got me a bit irritated because I was like, what the, f- why are these guys so damn tough? I don't understand what, I still don't know what otherworldly is. I'm sure somebody would be like, ah, you idiot, it's this. But the only way you knew that is because you read it somewhere. Right. And like, it's even when game. you have a very simple one that says armored, a new player doesn't know that armor's only against physical damage. Yeah. And again, takes less physical damage, takes yeah. more physical damage. Why can't, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't yeah. get it. Maybe they're scared to use the words increased instead of more or more instead of increased or decreased or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, no, but it would be, it would be, uh, it would be nice. It would be nice. My son, uh, I was, he was sitting on my lap for about an hour while I was playing. And uh, so I was showing him like, you know, I'm all scared and running away from blue. He's like, why are you running away from the blue ones? They're so easy. Cause he's used to playing on console upstairs. And so I'm like showing him the difference of mods and stuff like that. He asked me what a few modifiers meant. I had no idea. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Just try and kill him fast. And if you can't, just run away until you get your mana back and go at it again. And uh, then he's like, what? And then he's like, we're trying to read. So this is like, I know GGG is fixing it, at least for bosses in Path of Exile too. But he, when I came across a couple rare enemies, he's like, dad, stop. I want to read it. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> not going to happen. You wanted to read all the modifiers on the rare enemy. And I'm like, that's sorry. Is this when you were in the private league? Yeah. Yeah. I was just playing today, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. Hey, you don't want to die. Well, yeah, but how else am I going to know my enemies? I have to stop, pause the game. Mm-hmm. Mouse over them. Yeah. Ask them to stop moving because if they move, you'll lose sight of whatever the, the wording is. Anyway, the private league's been fun. If you're curious about it, it's going to run for 10 days. So you can still join by the time this comes out. You still got a, at least a week to, to hop in and uh, we're, we're going to have a good time in there. So that was my POE week. So I'm actually going to kind of jump here to how your POE week was because I assume you had more than just this. I did. And I'll talk about, um, I didn't have as much as I wanted to, but I really enjoyed the time that I didn't spend playing PUE as well. I'll talk about it more next week, but, uh, did a lot of formula one racing with the guys this week on the Xbox. And, uh, so I only played a few times this week, but one of them right after our podcast last go around, I've revisited path of exile on the Xbox one, not the current gen, but the now old gen. So PS4 slash Xbox one. Awesome. (sighs) 
I wish it was. Now, remember, you knew I it wasn't actually, gonna be. I barely played, I think it was 313, which was Ritual. And it was such a frustrating time for me. And I was so disappointed with GGG being okay with that product, right? Like when you make a game for console, you know the limitations of console, right? Like, and now this isn't the current complaint at all, but when anybody makes a game for console, everyone knows when you make a, whoever's making a game for console knows consoles don't change, right? You wait five years until the next gen of whatever that console is comes out, but that console is never going to change. It's never going to update. So if you want your game to work on that console, you know your limitations, you know your specs, and it's not going to change for whatever time frame, three, four, five years, whenever you make your game. So 313, Xbox had been out now, the Xbox PO, we'd been out for what, like two years, 313, I think it was Ritual comes out. Well, it was Ritual, whatever it was, whether it was 313 or not. And it was unplayable, unplayable. Yet, yeah, like, sure, Xbox has three different tiers, but you got to make your game work on the lowest version of the Xbox, right? The original Xbox one. And it couldn't, I couldn't do anything on it. And it was just gut wrenching. I could barely play that entire league. You didn't play Ritual for very long. So my POE in general was just non existent that league for the most part. So I go back in kind of terrified. Like I just went in last week. Now it's 3 15. I go back in and I'm like, oh, I hope it's good. I really hope it's good. Cause I've been playing on the Series X and it's phenomenal. It's so streamless. Like the only complaints I have are the normal petty things that a gamer has when they've been playing the game for six years. So I go in, I could play it. It 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 was good. There were some times where it wasn't choppy. Like before, I would play and I would just all I would have is shocked ground and the game couldn't handle it. It was skipping around and jumping, and I felt so nauseous with all the screen jumping. That didn't seem to bother it. But there was still like some very obvious things that were happening like and they really tried to make performance work well right like so for example i loaded a drox level and the frame rate was about 30 frames per second i mean there's no frame rate counter it wasn't really smooth but it wasn't choppy you know what i mean so it was like that in between so i guess that's 30 frames i don't know but i load i load so i'm fighting drox and it the, the gameplay was smooth but i couldn't see the flags the totem flags they just weren't there. They were there, but I couldn't see them. And so it was kind of like that that tool that they're using where it's like you're trying to remove assets that aren't needed to try and make the game work. But unfortunately, I did need those things. Like I couldn't see Drox's fists for the first two minutes of the fight. And so all of a sudden there'd be an explosion around me and I'm like, oh, that sucks. So like it it was it was really playable. It was way more playable than it used to be. Um but there was a lot of circumstances where, like, I'm doing a delirious map and the fog didn't show. And, and that's fine. That's great because I can actually see way more than a normal person would be able to. But then I couldn't tell how far close I was until the timer started when I'm, like, chasing the delirium fog. You know what I mean? So there was, the, and there's a lot more circumstances that I wrote down that I won't get into. But at the end of the day, like, it was playable. But it, it's, like squeak and buy and I, they're doing what they can but it would definitely not be something that i could play a lot of each week if i was still on the old gen consoles so i've heard chris say who knows how that'll happen that poe2 whenever it comes out will be the current gen only it'll be removed from the old gen store per se but um hopefully that attitude that they went into so this is pre series x pre ps5 launch hopefully the attitude that went into X that what they called acceptable quality for that game hopefully that bar is raised a lot higher when poe2 or whenever path of exile in general becomes current gen only hopefully that bar is high because it I was nice. gonna be a whole new gen by that point anyway and that's what he means by current gen it may be maybe and I, I have no problem with that at all i i just really want the game to succeed and i really want it to be great and so fortunately, like Chris and I, we haven't played, I don't think we played at all since 3.15 started, but I really want, like he's, he's willing to try the game. You know what I mean? Like you and I actually have a buddy that's, that's willing to enjoy the game. And if they've put in 30 hours to get through the campaign, I want it to be worth it for them. You know what I mean? And I really want them to like it. So it's just like, I, I'm passionate about it, especially on the console side, of course, but um anyway i had a good time playing it i would definitely won't go back or i couldn't suggest the game on the old gen consoles so hopefully hopefully that's something that uh i don't know i just i just want the game to do well so 
but it was fun because I, I also um I had a I had a Reddit post just like you made one. Yeah. So anytime I have this? a suggestion for GGG, I because they listen, right? Not to me, but to to the the, the community in general. And so sure. I like to come up with suggestions. Maybe someone will read it, and that would be awesome. But I I put it on the Path of Exile website on the forum suggestion site, but then I also put it in Reddit. And did I do something? No, you're good. You're not like, I'm not I just doing found something. an exacto knife. Okay. Okay. So I'm not doing anything wrong, Mike wise, that you're going to yell at me for. Not you fiddling. never know. Just randomly okay. cut you. Yeah. Watch, you're actually just outside my <laughs> window here. This is a recording I'm looking at. So, no. So I made a suggestion in a way it was more of a question but it was directed towards ggg and i said hey ggg why isn't your filter public your default filter you in the filter eh but i'm thinking well no but like i keep thinking about chris he wants to play with us or he wants to play and he's like i want to do a bow oh, character buddy chris okay yeah yeah so yeah sorry yes our friend chris he wants to do a bow character he knew he wanted to do bows he's like so i don't need the swords and staffs and shields to show how do i get rid of it and i'm like well do you know html coding can you can, okay i don't actually know can you use filter blade on on console you can. I just, I discovered through this post okay. that you can use it for console. Oh, okay. But console lens is a little bit different than PC lens, right? Uh, you go, you take any console game, you're not used to needing to go onto a website and make modifications and upload and download things and stuff like that. It's all uh, console land. It's all in the game. So anyway, I asked GGG why their default filters in public. In my mind, I'm thinking like you give us the ability to do the filter on your website, but then when you go and create new filter, it's blank. There's literally nothing. You have to create your own filter from scratch and not miss anything. Or you might never see a chaos orb. You know what I mean? Like there's not. So my suggestion within the blurb was, why don't you at least cr allow your default filter to be shown when someone creates a new filter on your website? And then they can at least just remove something or change a size of something, but they're not actually missing anything. So two totally different worlds in reddit i did have some really kind edifying why don't you just like they're, they're kind of missing the point they're like why don't why don't you just use filter blade and i'm like well what if never sync died tomorrow whoa well, i'm just or okay i said hit by a bus or something hit by a car i don't know but like Jesus, Tyler, what if calm down. what if what if he moved on to a different game i guess i should say that instead hey <laughs> <That's a better laughs> <option. laughs> yeah what if he moved on to a different game like right Right. So like it's sure people get right into the third party apps, totally fine that stuff. But I was kind of like the simple question was, and sure with some of the undertone, but why don't they just display their filter for us? Let us tinker with something, but they gave sure. us a tool to tinker with nothing. And so that was the question. Some people on Reddit were nice and just trying to be, Hey, well, why don't you just go here and your problems are solved? But it wasn't really answering the question. Uh, three quarters of it were just complete pricks and downvoting and rude and, you know, going real crazy. Yes, it is. And then people on the Path of Exile forum are all very helpful. They're like, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, but it sure would be nice to have more. And someone else is there. And so it was, it was just funny, like the two different worlds. There are people that are really trying to make Reddit great and it's awesome. But the Path of Exile site, it was just nice people. I'm sure, and there are pricks. Like I've had people like really rude, and you see people that are suspended and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was nice. And I I discovered what the border is. You know how sometimes in the Path of Exile site, there's people with a, like a nice bold border around their posts. You can nominate people that you think deserve it, like community stars that are like always not 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 always positive about the game, but always respectful and kind to people. You can nominate people, and then they get this permanent border around their name oh well, that's cool yeah so then it's like a ways that you know you can trust that content when they post something like a reply so i thought that was kind of neat i love i i don't actually really want to get into reddit but it does make me laugh i just because I, I don't know anybody like this i just i'm so curious the person that <laughs> what like, are they anytime like? they see a post just is like i'm gonna shit post this one. Oh, i got something to say about this i just i'm really curious to meet that person because i don't get it i don't understand like this is me on any form of social media. Swipe, swiping, still swiping, don't care, moving on. I just don't get it. I don't understand the idea of like, I got to stop and I need to tell you why I disagree with you. That's weird to me. Oh man, imagine that though, like in a lineup somewhere, right? You're at Best Buy, you're buying a set of headphones. 
they don't like your headphones. It's go time. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, another random customer yeah. is the one that, yeah, that's, that's weird exactly to me. It. They're, they're the one standing right behind you. Go time. Oh, it would be go time if somebody <laughs> in real life started doing that. Yeah. Anyway, it's weird to me, but. I found Val Temple again. Thank you, Zana. Easy, Tiger. You just got like right into the mic there. You got excited about Val Temple. <laughs> yeah, it was a joke, man. It rolled. It was, of course, it's corrupt. It rolled. I don't even know if it rolls uncorrupted, but it was it was like temporal chains and other horrible things. And that stupid lady prick boss that does like the the rain. The spikes. triple boss. Yeah, but I, I don't know why, but it's always I don't because I'm always doing like something where I, I don't really control who I'm killing first. I'm doing righteous fire with incinerate. So they're AOEs. And then I'm doing zombies, right? They're, I can try. But it's, they're just going to kill who they kill and that's that. So I'm always left, always left with that crazy lady with like the, the spikes that rain down. I don't know what kind of damage that is. I think it's physical. It's but, so fast. Oh, and it is. And it's a big AOE. I don't know if it's splashing or not because I feel like I'm really far away from these like shards that are falling down. Nope. And they are so, my goodness. Like I, I watched my health and I went back into my broadcast and I'm like, all my defenses are up. I can take any content. Like, I'm not a tank per se, but when everything's up, I can take it. I can take it nice. And sure, it's circumstantial. And so sometimes I'll get one shot when just by chance my guard skills down and my offerings not up and sure, that kind of stuff. And I expect that. But I went back and I looked and I'm like, I am getting one shot by like, ah, and sure, yeah, there's modifiers, but I can't change them. Anyway, I still don't have bell temple unlocked <laughs> i am i'm he going through it. and I, it was like That's literally awesome. if i if i could get my calling strike off i would have won but i couldn't get it off in time but i had a first justin i had a first Congrats. i got my first influenced exalt i think it was a crusader exalt first one was it on console or pc console don't care i know you don't Doesn't i congratulated care. somebody on reddit who had their first mirror drop I noticed the screenshot was also on console, so it's super exciting. But yeah, I had my first influenced exalt that I'm never going to spend, of course, because, you know, I, I most of my exalts I spend just through like multi crafting and stuff on the crafting bench. I don't actually do that. Oh, Some I'm of really the crafting with it is really cool that you if can, you can do. narrow it down. Yeah, it's very specific. Yeah, you got to really plan that out. Yeah, and I'm I'm not there on any of my characters yet, but I had, I had an awesome time. I had a really good time. I, I played for science. And I worked on my filters still. I've finished everything but weapons now, Justin. I've gone through every base type. God, I except... hope they change it. I hope they change it so bad. I will put that suggestion out. Maybe that'll be my, hey, I put a Reddit post out last week. Next episode, maybe that'll be it. But uh, it's fun. I enjoy it. I, I'm learning so much about it. And I'm playing through with my filter. Frick, it's strict, man. You want options? Don't do mine. <laughs> you... I, I really like how strict my filter is. But anyway, I had an awesome, awesome POE week. It was very, very busy outside of Formula One. So Sweet. yeah, it was good. All right. Listen, I think uh, I think we should wrap it up because we've got a private league to play. I've got some uh, deaths to watch you do. Oh, I want to say one more thing. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. I want to apologize to GGG. I'm sorry. Why? I'm sorry. I feel like I've been such a negative what, they say negative Nancy, but I think some people don't like that. Like it's sexist when oh, a guy says it. Oh, it's a negative it, so. Nancy. Neg negative Ned. Negative Ned. There, You're a negative a Nick and Nancy. All right. There you yeah. go. Oh, Nick, what difference does it make? One. Wait, you can say negative Ned, but not negative Nancy? I don't I'm know. offended now. I, I know you are. All right. <laughs> I've uh, been a Debbie or Don Downer. <laughs> Jesus. And... <laughs> No, not Jesus. Debbie or Don. Uh, but no, I've been, I, I feel like I've been really You've rough. been a dick. You've been a dick. Maybe, maybe. No, but you I feel like I got caught up in all the like kerfuffle about like, well, I Ooh, want this changed and I want this changed and I want this changed. And I feel like I jumped on the train and I don't like jumping on that train. I like taking a step back. And so anyway, I think about it was what? when I played the Xbox One version or maybe when I read that article about games that are like PoE, but totally not. I just, I don't know. I feel like I've been really negative for the last league and stuff. So sorry, GGG. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. They don't listen anyway, but I didn't mean it. So are you taking back your comments or are you just going to I'm be just nicer? sorry. You can't, you can't take back mean things, Justin. I'm just sure sorry. you can. No, I'm just yes, yeah, you can. Watch this. I take it back. <laughs> that's no, right. We're deleting it. every episode. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm changing. I'm going to be more appreciative and I'm going to hope 
for certain things, but I'm not going to complain about it anymore. I think I've yeah, said right. this like a hundred times <laughs> right. over our hundred episodes, but I'm, 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 I'm so you're not going to complain. I didn't mean to jump on the negative Don C train. I don't find that we have been overly negative. I think we've actually we're pretty. What's the word? Awesome. We're pretty awesome. Well, we're not, not a, negative. I'm I'm not good general. at hardcore, so I'm not allowed opinions. But there are some things that need to be fixed and are bad, and it's okay to bring I, I that know, up. I know, but I feel like I've been complaining and whining about it. I I feel like I. But that's been your thing. About that's it. your character for the podcast. That's who. That's what you bring. That whiny. <laughs> Why do you want <laughs> one of our patrons is called Whiny Wad? They signed up and that's their name, Whiny Wad. That's your name on Patreon, isn't it? Nope. Oh, those comments aren't you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? I thought yeah, they were all no, you. I'm Wrecker of Days. Oh, that's I'm amazing. I'm everywhere, man. Oh, now I feel bad because I've ignored them every time because I just assumed, <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed it was you. No, that's funny. You know who they are, too. Oh, do I? They're above oh, yet. Yeah. Okay. Above. Well, then I don't feel so bad about ignoring them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry, GGG. I didn't mean it. I got caught up with the crowd. He'll do it again. Just wait. And I might, but I don't mean it when I do. Only listen to the positive stuff I have to say. Or the suggestions. Or the or the minor complaints, but not major <laughs> ones. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right that's right that's right all right sweet let's wrap this up episode 103 thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode of forever exile the path of exile podcast jeez a forever exile the path of exile podcast i'm justin ak tags i'm whiny wad patrons will catch you guys in after dark everybody else will see you in episode 104 if you're playing in a private league come into general 2121 say hi we'll have fun if you're looking for more information, you can find it down below. We got a website foreverxl.com. We're on Twitter foreverxl82. We have a Discord, which is super awesome, and you should join it. And all of our Patreon and extra stuff is down below. Bye. Oh, and 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 join our private league for fun. Like it's for fun. Don't worry about being competitive. I asked my wife. I'm like, hey, are you gonna like play our private league? She's like, no, it's a competition. I'm like, what? What? Well, you're not gonna what? join because you can't win. She's like, you yeah. also know two of the worst competitors in it, being us. <laughs> you're fine. So, anyway. Join and Join. get to have level fun. two and die and have a great time doing it. Exactly. It's a, it's just a fun thing. So anyway, this has gone on too long. Bye.